He's gonna uh, shake hands hello. with a pink slip now. Hey everybody. What a start. Uh, what a start. Uh, in this in the last episode of Dark Matter, some interesting revelations happened as uh, we shut up. I need to hear got to, <coughs> we got to start off by figuring out possibly the solution to the mystery of what happened to Q. QR. Uh, as QR found himself awakening in what felt like a closet, a very plain and empty closet, inevitably emerging to see a red Genasi fellow and another Vec, though a noticeably large Vec. Vec as um, they seemed very, they seemed very uh, timid of QR's uh, positioning, as they later told mentioned to him that he had emerged through um, through a Rothian portal that they had also escaped through and seemingly had deactivated uh, when they had tried to reactivate it. It had pulled QR through. They did not know the reason, and they did not initially know what planet they were on. Upon leave, upon them leaving the uh, confines of this small hut, if you will, uh, under a new agreement with each other, as QR kind of felt himself freer with uh, the seemingly removal or deactivation of his restrictor plate, if you will, um, that kind of keeps him in contact with the tower as well. Uh, he was able to denote through the land that he was still, in fact, on Vexen 5. But these two clearly were new to the land. However, we had cut back then to the normal party, who all of which had brought back the hostage and the criminal who was left remaining from their first mission, uh, in which they were taken to special custody. Well, custody for the criminal, uh, hospital for the hostage. Um they uh, were able to then begin the briefing or they were given a quick debriefing and then another briefing of their next mission uh, which <laughs> was going to pretty much the realm of kind of fulfilling the mission that they were going to be doing otherwise well that was their other choice from the f when they were kind of initially given the choices of what thing places to take because it kind of bumped up on some priority list uh, so they felt like it, it would be fitting for all of them to kind of be able to go to the base. Um, so they had, we had ended with them inevitably kind of going through all of the briefing and kind of potential tomfoolery, if you will, of either trying to talk with each other, uh, buy or sell things, <laughs> or the just total... 100% maturity that nobody had any type of <laughs> weird thoughts about a dwarf and a taller woman. <laughs> we were mature. Nobody had any weird thoughts whatsoever. None. None. And we ended the episode as they launched their shuttle towards the mountains. However, we're going to start episode today going back to QR. So QR, you guys are out uh, in, in the relatively calm snow, uh, snowy landscape that you found yourself in. Um, the There is no snow falling. This, it just only remains on the ground. There is relative sunlight, a uh, decent amount of clouds as is relative on the mountains, but there's very little wind here, in fact. Um, you detect very little in terms of, uh, you know, a wind chill. Um, in fact, it's just cold enough for a good, I would say, for kind of average sustainable life. Uh, nothing going too far below um, where it becomes dangerous for especially um, significantly covered beings or well, the more of the uh, biological beings you don't have as much of an issue. Though, if it gets cold enough, you can't find yourself freezing circuits. It's true. But you are uh, not near that 
Uh, you, in fact, have better frost resistance than the 2000s era laptop. So you will you will find yourself lasting longer than most humans. Or human-like creatures. Humanoids. Uh, so yes, you, uh, the Fire Genasi, and Varibel have uh, started to kind of make your way towards... Um, you, well, you've kind of started to take presumption towards what you would kind of gauge for any type of facility to be based on kind of the base map that was available to you guys in the hut. So you've begun your uh, your trek. Uh, were you potentially going to be wanting to lead these two, or what was your? Were you going to allow them to lead you? Um, Q, I would probably be in the lead. It feels like almost instinctual for him to be at the front right. of whatever party he's a part of. Okay, so make a survival check. Yeah, sure thing. Just make a bunch of noise real quick. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, got it. Dude's Bible checks. Yeah, that is going to be a 13. All right. Uh, you find the, the farther you go, it starts to, the snow starts to kind of entrudge into you. It's, uh, you clearly weren't uh, set up to take this kind of truck in the snow, so your ability to try to essentially emulate the snowshoes of old is unavailable to you at the moment. So it starts to kind of weigh in as the snow gets a little bit deeper. Uh, kind of slows you down a peg. Um, granted, and you have been able to surmise that you were about leaving around the noon hour. So it does take you, but about a few hours later, you kind of are starting to see in the horizon um, the crest of a shape. Uh, if you would like to make a perception check, Maybe see how well you can picture this object. Rolling real good today. I'll make one for uh, you. 12. All right. Let me see here quick here. Double check here. Their skills. Uh, you and the Vect have something in common in that you both rolled a 12. Damn. Uh, Vex apparently see alike. <laughs> when to become one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Barth, or sorry, the uh, the the uh, Genasi here is struggling a bit as he's found himself distracted uh, by his feet, kind of <coughs> rel feeling relatively cold under the what is kind of melting snow around him. <laughs> You kind of notice that he also is, uh, as you're walking, that as he walks, he kind of almost like, he doesn't have as much of a hard time walking through, but then will slip a lot as a lot of the the, the areas that he kind of starts to, because you, you see the snow kind of melt around him, but mm -hmm. then obviously because it's cold enough, it just kind of starts to, it starts to freeze over relatively quickly. So it makes it, you kind of see this ice trail <laughs> behind him. Uh, he... My fellow companion. Yeah. By any chance, would you like me to carry you to our destination? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, it's. Uh, I'd rather. I'd rather walk. It's definitely a, a little, a little better. Uh, uh, you, you can. Uh, by by the way, I don't think I noted this earlier. Uh, you can just call me Barth, but uh, my my name my name is Barth Akam. Yeah, friends call me Barth. 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 Well, Barth, I gotta say, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I hope that the things that I mentioned earlier did not come off as too untoward your current state of being. Uh, you know, no, no, no. Yeah, honestly, kind of between that and uh, a Rothian ship where you're potentially being enslaved, it's not the worst thing I heard So in the last few months. So I think I'll take it. Excellent. It can only get worse from here. And I keep watching. <laughs> okay, so you can tell, you can't really see it too well, but you can kind of vaguely tell uh, that the, the, 
the shapes in the distance feel almost look almost like the a large building. Hang on, everyone. I see a large building up ahead. Yes, I concur. This must be the location of the of the facility that was located in the hut. Let us proceed cautiously, as there may be enemies nearby. Uh, I'm going to turn to Varibel. Would you recommend the knocking on the front door approach that I am very fond of? Or perhaps should we pursue a different strategy? If we face no fi uh, sorry, if we face no enemies before reaching the entrance, then I would suggest that. Otherwise, if we face hostilities, forcing our way through the door may be the best course of action. You know, I really appreciate that you pull options. It I like the, the way you think. It is the only options we have remaining. You uh, <clears throat> really are the wordsmith there, Variable. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's get going then. So let me see here. What's your? Uh... Sorry, I can't quick switch to your character sheet. It's always so annoying to me. For some reason, like certain, like characters in the campaigns, don't show up in the quick select, like where you can just select the campaign in the top corner, and I can just go between each of your character sheets. So that way, I don't have to like go back, go forward, go back, go forward, go back, go forward. I can just switch between character sheets. For some reason, yours and Barthacan's don't show up in their respective campaigns, and I don't know why. <laughs> And and you can find this problem on D and D Beyond. Yeah, perfect. It's D &D totally Beyond. perfect. You no glitches whatsoever. You no. too can deal with this. <laughs> you too can be glitched out and have to utilize use something that's more annoying that could be solved, <laughs> but apparently it doesn't work. Um, okay, so you're, all right. Uh, so you start walking for a little while. Um, you start to notice that while that the snow is, you know, getting quite deep, but uh, you started to kind of notice that there's a little more um, kind of wildlife in the skies around. Um, this is the you started to actually probably kind of see what life could exist up in the mountains here. Life finds a way. <laughs> Oh God! Life could be a dream. <laughs> this is how we get the amount. <laughs> oh yeah, forgot to change these. So I gotta fix these. Boop, ba, Let's see here. All right. Uh, so if you would like to make me as you're making your approach here, one last. Uh, the building is starting to become a little clearer. It's almost kind of. Um, this like semi dome kind of uh, building. It's actually kind of multiple buildings now that you notice them, but some of them bigger than others, kind of receding into a mountainside. Mm. <coughs> Let me just put in some. Add these two here to my list. I think. Of characters. Are there visible doors and windows on this building? Uh, so I mean, you're still a little far. You um, it, so it's a little hard to see some exact shapes, but you kind of see some uh, like part segments to it that almost kind of look like different doorways to different areas. Um, so kind of depending on certain buildings, um, they're all relatively equidistant away from you, as far as you can tell. Uh, but it's a little more, at least like the benefit that they have is they, it's more just about whether or not you would want to go to this left smaller building, the, the main one it kind of depended on what your, what your choice would be. Let's 
try a different one, shall we? Wait. All right. As a, uh, let's see. So, what kind of which one are you looking to go towards more? I think QR would want to go for the smaller left building. All right. So who kind of know? So as you start to kind of meander that way, um, a Bartha can will kind of pop up and go. Uh, it, 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 I, I guess I don't really. It doesn't make a difference to me. But uh, is there any reason you particularly want to go to this building? Well, I'll tell you something I picked up a few years ago. A smaller building like this one, and he, like, grandiose gestures of the building, being of shorter stature, is going to have a less advantageous viewpoint for any sleepers up in being smaller, will be able to see enemies on the virtue that they won't be so high up in the sky. This was taught to me by a dwarf that I had to kill about a year and a half ago. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. That sounds good. That sounds good. All right. Let's just stop. Let's just keep going. As uh, you start to uh, kind of make your way towards the building a little more. Um, Oh, so sorry. Did I, I had you make another perception check, right? Uh, no, I didn't do that. Addition. Okay. Yeah, make another, make another one as you approach. Uh, the oh my God, these rolls tonight. <coughs> oh, these rolls—they're not good, and also very, very bad. Uh let's see. Uh, uh yeah. So that's gonna be an eleven. All right. Yeah. So you can kind of um. The building itself, as you get closer, doesn't seem to have kind of too much to it. Um, let's see. Okay, that'll do it. Uh, oh, 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 the first nat one of the session is another robot. Hey. hey. Time for him to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yet Before another robot disappears. Yet. <laughs> no, uh, no, it wasn't a one hundred. So at least he doesn't, uh, and he doesn't totally disappear in the same way. In the same way, he's well, like there are he's like tuxedo ways, mask. There are a number of ones that can have you vanish, but for temporary amounts of time. He's just like, my work here is done. But Varibel, you didn't do anything. He just like, so, takes his cape and walks. So, uh, Barth kind of comes in to me and you is like, he, he kind of like shifts around and he goes, they, they're hiding, but we're being watched. As uh, kind of upon hearing that, um, <coughs> yeah, yeah. uh, Variable will kind of bring out his axe, but I'll, except he'll kind of mess mess up, and I'll, you'll kind of hear like a kunk as he kind of like hits his hand to his chin. <laughs> Can I? QR at that moment would um. I can't remember if this was made clear last session, but he would at that point want to check to see if Varibel's arms look like they were, I guess I'd say factory set, or if it's possibly new appendages that he's used as part of his chassis. Oh, I mean, that's, I mean, inherently, you can only, really, you can only ever know that probably, because it's just mm. one of those things where it's like, you know, that are all for many factor forged differently. Um, the the foundry has seemingly little to no pattern, so it's hard to say. He bears no emblems on his arms and stuff like that that would really showcase like some type of like engineer sponsor. 
which happens every now and then. Yeah. You'll, you'll have uh, a lot of engineers that do graphs of like arm, mechanical arm replacements and whatnot, kind of use Vect to advertise their grafting by like mm. putting their logos on the arms and or append different appendages. So many DuPont and GoDaddy.com stickers. <laughs> uh, so, but he is lacking any of these types of things, as far as you can tell. Uh, no inherent Casper emblems, mattresses. So, uh, Best yeah. sleep you ever get. Lacking sponsors, so <laughs> seems to be as normal as it gets. Just a bigger vect. Mm -hmm. Is he taller than Eno? How tall is Eno again? I could look, but I just wasn't sure if you knew off the top of your head. How tall is Enum? Uh, uh, four foot twenty. <laughs> what? Again. <laughs> four twenty just plays. Thank you very much. You. I thought yeah. he was like six foot. Yeah, that he is. He's like six foot. Blaze it. I, I just, I just had to think fast. <laughs> uh, then yes, <laughs> Gotta go fast. he does seem noticeably bigger than Edom. I will note that in my memory banks. <laughs> All right. I think our best option is just to try to get towards the cover as much as possible. Though we may be able to expect him inside. Um, QR is going to adjust uh, a portion of the sort of the underside of the chin by the neck there, um, <coughs> and it is the volume of his voice will decrease, and he'll say, "I think that's a really good idea. We should proceed with caution." All right. So you guys will move. You'll kind of reach towards the door. Ah. Um, as kind of to the benefit of his nat 20 perception that he got earlier. <laughs> he will. Oh, I have to go back. Okay, thank you. At least, luckily, I only have two characters in the other can in like the NPC list. To switch between so i could just go back and forward on <laughs> but as he will uh you will kind of see bartha can actually oh well then hold on give me one moment here i have uh i have a slight addendum to make here yeah. is it news from the warfront it's a uh, news that your DM <laughs> constantly forgets to add spells to his NPCs. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> my dearest Marilyn, my character sheet contains no spells. I'm getting hungrier point. by the day. <laughs> <laughs> Fear may not last the night. <laughs> Uh, I may have to eat my familiar. <laughs> no. Well, oh, I don't know how I got. <laughs> I do not have fun. Things grow dire for myself <laughs> and do Captain not, Tough Tail. I, I do not. I do not have prepared. Find familiar. <laughs> <laughs> if I cannot see you again, tell my wife hello. <laughs> <laughs> And always remember, faith in the god emperor, purge the unclean. <laughs> they will burn in holy fire. Skulls for the skull throne. When they remember find my body, remember tell them it was heresy. <laughs> brother. <laughs> brother. Brother. I'm pinned here. <laughs> All right. He will. This he is will... good, isn't it? Right here, I got to refresh this page. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a wog. <laughs> Why did none of these move? I am confused. Oh, here's a weird ass smell from outside my apartment right now. 
<laughs> All right. <laughs> so, as you will see him lash out a number of darts from his hand. Uh, let's see. So, we'll, we'll just do that since it's just first <laughs> level. So, he gets all three darts. Oh, man. Can't be the QR dies in this episode. No, so you'll oh, see the finally. darts. So you'll see the darts kind of strike <laughs> above. There's kind of the archway above this door as you're reaching it, and there seems okay. to be like a pile of snow on the top of the archway. Uh, mm -hmm. However, as he kind of shoots his hand forward, um, you will kind of see uh, the, the snow kind of get hit as you'll kind of hear a voice of a man kind of go like, as he'll kind of fall off, like lift up and kind of fall off the. Uh, uh, the archway as you can roll for initiative. <laughs> no! Kanye <laughs> West likes being a citizen. Guys, we're doing the sans music. <laughs> that was a, that was a miss roll. <laughs> Oh, oh come on! You never see it coming. Friggin... Oh my god, can these two please roll a decent initiative? <laughs> my um, rolls are terrible tonight. Great. <laughs> Let's see how the enemy does. How what was your initiative roll? Four. Oh, wow. All right. All right. Nice. We'll go at the exact same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's roll this. Okay, so let me uh, let me take this guy's damage first, as he took uh, a solid six damage. Ouch! As uh, one might say, oof. One might, not this day. It is not this day. <laughs> not this way. I may fall. You know, it doesn't let me start in this video. Okay, here we go. All right, as um, from the inside uh, will come out um, kind of a man put up in a slightly kind of uh, not a too impressive looking okay. um, frame armor. Kind of looks like it's clearly seen some wear and tear across the years. As there we go. Ah! Spotted the trap man. No matter, we'll deal with you anyway. So he'll throw a spear. The guy who's kind of in the front, which is... Cute. What's that? The trash man? The trash man! <laughs> <laughs> he just starts eating garbage. <laughs> uh, I don't think this... No, this is not going to hit. This will miss. So that... Uh, is sure. So I'll you'll, take your word you'll for see it. see his spear. It's, it's a nine. You got, you got okay, by yeah. default, you have more than a 10. You have a 10 mm -hmm. at minimum. <laughs> uh, so, yes, <laughs> you'll miss as uh, you'll, the spear will kind of land in front of your feet. What? As uh, the warrior man who okay. fell off the roof uh, kind of picks up and goes, eh. No matter. As he will kind of trudge up. Walk up towards the uh, the Genasi man, and attempt to cut at him with his spear, and uh, I am rolling amazingly today. Like just all full marks for me, mm -hmm. as he will also miss at a cool nine. Oh, actually, this is a ten. Oh, I actually ten out of ten. I read this wrong. I thought it was a seven. This is a crit fail. <laughs> Hey! <laughs> I read this Another wrong. one. Another one. Oh, uh, yay. You're doing great, dude. All, yeah, I am doing amazing in my roles tonight. Just keep it as, up, man. Just seemingly a sack as he kind of tries to pull out the spear, but it seems to cut out a little bit of the bag as he's running through. And so he starts to steal trails of just, of like food and like other like knickknacks just fall out <laughs> of his pocket. Right of his like kind of carrying sack. 
is that uh, he tries to swing it wildly at, but just kind of totally whiffs. As now it will be Variable's turn, as he does not take kindly to the man swinging at his friend, his companion. So his large. I mean, the sad part is the image had kind of had an axe, but I actually gave him a glaive, so he has a glaive. <laughs> Uh, but he will, because I am just doing amazingly, he will also miss. Jesus. <laughs> Is that yes. all the three? It's like oh. a coordinated ballet of everyone just <laughs> fairly missing each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just a amazing, just purely uh, amazing sights to behold here. As a uh, I see you too are a common writer fan. <laughs> uh, let's see. Sure. Is this okay? All right. As he is going to, yeah, we'll just do this because he's. Um... No, I can't do this one. I kind of do just have to. As he is going to kind of take some of the, like, put a little flame in his hand and kind of, kind of push it towards him to kind of emit a mode of light over him, over his, over himself as he kind of starts to shed this bright light. And that would be his turn because level two, as it shows. Not much better. <laughs> Alright, as uh, QR, it is finally your turn. It's finally my turn. Oh my god. Um, oh my god. QR is going to say to the first figure, the one that had uh, attacked initially, um, I'm going to say to them, I've got some advice for you. Generally. When you want to hit your target, you also want to make sure that you're aiming in their general direction. Uh, and he's going to oh. pull out his stun gun. He's going to aim and fire right at his head. At All the right. general direction. Go for it. And then I rolled my attack. Uh, that's a little better. I uh, don't get any other... Oh, shit. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, plus four. That's good. Uh, eight. eighteen will hit. Cool. All right. There's gonna be damage. Any... Uh, so that is thirteen points of piercing damage, I suppose. All right. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's uh, lightning because it's a stun gun. Oh uh, yeah, it should be lightning, shouldn't it? If, if, if so, the way to change the damage on like weapons is super finicky because you can't like make your own base weapon in D and D Beyond. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, it may say piercing, but I, I, if anything, I think I tried to add like that it does the lightning damage. So obviously the idea that it's shocking them to stun them. So shocking, yeah, gotcha. shocking. Uh, you will, he will, uh, like convulse at the shock and just like fall to the ground. <laughs> Had to stop myself from saying something. Uh, anything QR else? is going to use the rest of his turn to move towards the man with the sack. Okay, well, he is actually kind of... He's like technically clacking in my kind sack. of just behind... He is within five feet of you. Because uh, he had to go... Okay. Uh, if you kind of think of yourself, like the three of you, if you started this as like you, uh, <coughs> you, Barth, Variable, he kind of put himself between you and Barth kind of to this side. So he's kind of behind your back left. Mm. That's great. QR is going to close the gap and get right up next to him as close as he can. Well, you're within reaching distance right now. Okay. And then I'm going to end the turn there. Yeah, okay. All right. And then, so that will make it 
uh, this guy's turn. So you'll kind of start to see now from the back as you'll kind of rise up from this seemingly almost disguisable mound as uh, this guy, will, another one will kind of trudge up. They're, they clearly are also wearing, either wearing their snowshoes, but he's a little, he's kind of quickly trying to make his way through. He doesn't make it all the way, makes it probably about uh, 10 feet away uh, from Varabel in the back, but he does try to throw one of his spears at Varavel. Will he hit? He has a low chance, and it's even made lower with my low rolls today. Oh my god, he actually hit. <laughs> it's a miracle. Damn. It happened. I rolled a good roll. Damn. Who would have thought? Congrats. Congrats, so the damage. One story is happy again. Mm -hmm. These are the true heroes of this story. Four. Yeah, the, the the tribal man, the tribal scavengers who are attacking the yes. party, <laughs> the true heroes. Oh, yeah, they're going out against of... the greatest enemy of all, capitalism. Man. And so, kind of throw across for <clears throat> kind of scratch off the side of one of Barabel's arms as uh, the neck the other warrior now shall go since the guard has been knocked out and he will in fact hit uh, what he is now actually going for um you uh, QR because he stunned the guy so he's a little uh, thrown off by you and he will hit you uh, yes with your 13 AC so yep uh, 19 will definitely hit that's and why I don't so get the he is now advice and he's doing the spear so he will get the D8 now that's some solid damage of an 8 mm. oh <clears throat> As it will now be Varabel's turn. He's going to try to counteract this warrior man. He's going to crit fail. This is the third time. <laughs> yeah! God damn. Dude. Natural one RPG. Staying damn true to our name. Oh my god, we had none last week. I too like to I live making, dangerously. I am apparently making up for it in, in folds. Uh, I'm gonna write that in my notes. Oh, that was really cool. <laughs> it almost just vanished. <laughs> you know what he does? You know what does happen? If things couldn't get worse, this guy has had... He accidentally sliced his pack open, <clears throat> lost all his stuff. Now, for some reason, just all of his clothes fall off. <laughs> he is just... Ah, uh, the old nudity Lost trick. everything. <laughs> Even just in, in the shock has the dropped his special spear momentarily. <laughs> yes, the path is coming. special. Oh, no, wait, this is Varabel. This is Varabel, not the, not oh, the no. guy. Uh, Varabel has a cloak on, so he lost that. He was distracted by it and also dropped his, his uh, glaive. And missed the guy. So Martha can. It is, it is Martha can's turn. <laughs> Uh, he is going to attempt to move forward, risking the uh, attack of opportunity here uh, from the guy. The guy is going to hit him. Uh, so he will get that D8. So he's going to take <coughs> three damage. He will He will survive. Die. He will survive. Oh. I will survive. You must die. You must die. <laughs> Um, but then upon getting a little bit of distance, he is going to launch at him a nice and cool ray of frost. Nice. While these guys may live here, they are not, in fact, resistant to cold. However, he whiffs anyway. Solid. You only had to beat a 12 when I rolled a 2. This dice is not doing any better for me. Today is just apparently a bad day. <laughs> Uh, it's QR, it is your turn. There is now the man Perfect. behind you and the man still next to you. Alright, um... As you see, uh, Bartha can't so, Frost just go right by him. So, the man behind me is the man with the sack, and then the man next to me is the other 
guard ish no, figure. So farther back behind Verabel is the mm-hmm. new uh more tribally looking guy. Okay. Kinda like the guy that was hidden on the roof. <laughs> the sack man is the guy that was hidden on the roof. And then you the guy was a little more armored that was in the doorway. You apparently didn't okay. care, but <laughs> that he was better armored. <laughs> you knocked him out real quick. Yes. Next to you is the sack man. And farther back is the guy that hit Verabel with the spear. How far away is the guy that hit Verabel? Uh so he is about so you're 10 feet from Verabel. He's 10 feet. So you're about 20 feet from Verabel. If you wish to move, you are currently in um, difficult terrain. Mm-hmm. So you. Because I don't think you have any benefits to difficult terrain here. Uh, yeah, probably. I don't think this is my favorite terrain at all. So. No. <coughs> yeah, you have forest. Yeah. And you don't have any you don't have any features, at least yet, that give you um faster movement. So mm-hmm. so yeah. So yeah, so it'll be All difficult right. terrain. So essentially uh your speed is is halved while in the snow. Yeah, gotcha. Uh QR is going to uh reach for the man with the sack. Uh he is going to Attempt to grab him by the neck and snap. Oh. All right, make a grapple check, I guess. So uh, you kind of, uh, so make the strength check. Okay. Uh, That's not too bad. Open. Uh, and I'll go ahead and you said just like a standard strength check. Yeah, so just uh, the the dice plus your strength uh, modifier. Uh, fifteen. All right, you will be able to grapple him. Let's see. So now, I guess I, I guess I'll make it like a strength save. There's not a lot of great rules for the idea of, like, grappling somebody and trying to, like, just, you know. Because mm-hmm. technically you can succeed the grapple check, but it's not like a specific rule. Like, you can't just try to snap the neck. That's crazy. <laughs> um, like, so, I guess I'll just, uh, essentially I'll kind of make, like, a resistance. Because obviously it's not, e- you can't just, if he's resisting you, it makes it a lot harder just to try to. Yeah, for sure. Um, Stop resisting. So you're not really getting your, you have him grappled, but you you're not like he's definitely like fighting you a lot. So it's not really the easiest thing to get like a really quick like snap. You have to really kind of try to if you if you want to get to him, you'll have to really kind of lay like you essentially have to make an attack roll for it later. You have to tr- mm. Okay. Um, am I able to perform any other actions then on this turn? Or... No, because that, that grapple is your attack action. All right. So I still at least have him held. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He will get the chance to break out in his turn. Sure. My intention was that he was going to reach out and hold him by the neck with just the one hand. Um. Okay. So if there's any kind of like advantage or disadvantage on that that applies, uh, it will uh, give you advantage on any type of essentially ability to damage him. Okay. Um. Otherwise, he's and, essentially just like he's resisting the hand. So. Yeah. These things take time. Sure. Uh. But any bonus actions or anything that you have available to you? I... It would take an action to let... 
if you were to let him, uh, if you let him go, <laughs> Harry, no, but the, it's just more of what this allows you to do is it gives you the opportunity to do what you wanted to next turn. Right. So that's kind of why I guess the, the initial thought is you probably do it in the same turn because it gives you the setup to do what you want to do later. <laughs> I'm just thinking. Mm -hmm. Also, your okay. Your um, members will also have advantage because he's. In yeah, a way I'll, I'll. I'll keep. I'll keep my grip on him, and I'll end the turn there. Okay. So. That will make it. The other tribal warriors. As he will walk up behind the Varibel. As he will crit the Varibel. <coughs> let's, oh, let's hope we roll well. I don't. <laughs> That's a solid two on the dice roll. <laughs> Should I have just gone for the average instead of rolling the damage? Maybe. Potentially. Did, but, but you I didn't. Did it. <laughs> but I didn't. You're correct. So I must. I. I was. I have made my bed, and now I shall lie in it. Uh, so that will be a cool five damage. <laughs> You're gonna fucking lie in that bed. <laughs> I don't like the way you said that. <laughs> <laughs> right, and the other man is gonna try to break the, your grasp. Uh, he will succeed. Oh, so actually, make an opposing strength check. Actually, no. So since he's breaking yeah, your grasp, that's... this is a strength. This is opposing strength. Um... Oop, dup, oh, dup, no. And you said this was with advantage or disadvantage because yeah, so it's, I'm is... holding him with one hand. Well, so this is just uh, this is outside of an attack. Okay. So this is just normal. So... Ooh, soft 20. All right, so you, he is, Ooh. you almost feel like he's, like, getting ready, but you just really, uh, just in the, enhance the vice grip that you've got on his neck. You're uh, buckle down. I can see why you're struggling, but I gotta say, you might just end up injuring yourself. Resistance is futile. <laughs> you must construct uh, additional pylons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as that will be, uh, or as that will make it. Uh, Varabelle's turn. So this is going to turn with the guy who technically crit him. And, and murder him, him, right? Well, he's going to hit him. So okay. we've got that going for him. him. Uh, what's the dice? A d10. Oh, that's a solid 10. Hey -o. <laughs> hey -o. And that's this guy, so he is not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. But he's not looking good. I feel fine. <laughs> As uh, then Barth the can is he? I wanted to save that because yeah. All right, so he is going to then uh, just use another. So he's gonna go with. Uh, he's gonna attack the guy behind Farabel. Uh, he will hit. He's going to kind of, you'll see him kind of uh, make a, you know, kind of start to summon the words as a almost kind of dark bell will ring out. Oh, that's why it's called Maribel. No, this is Barthacan. It's behind Ver. It's the guy behind Varibel. Eh, it's close enough. As, man, I'm killing it. I'm killing it today. That's not why the Maribel on the plus side. Me. That's literally all the damage that I needed <laughs> kill, for him to die. He dies. <laughs> As uh, the guy, kind of the toll rings, and the man behind Varibel falls into the snow. As then, uh, QR, you have the man grappled by the neck. It is your turn. What <laughs> shall you do? Indeed, I do. 
Uh, what I'm going to do, just uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> this man has proven to have a strong neck. Uh, QR is not going to attempt to snap said neck any longer. Uh, instead, he's going to take the stun gun with his other hand. And he's going to apply it to the man's heart. And he will say, If you are not able to comply, I must be honest, I will have to send you into cardiac arrest. But I'll let you make the choice. What languages do you speak? Let's see. Compliance will be rewarded. Uh, the language of love and... No, hold on. Uh, dwarvish, elvish, gnomish, and common. Yep. So you do not speak this man's language. As uh, he will kind of utter out this like guttural kind of language. I also speak ASCII. <laughs> this doesn't seem to be that. As uh, yeah, he kind of speaks <clears throat> out this guttural language. And as he kind of spits on your arm. You are... He can't really sigh. I don't think he has a physical capacity to really sigh in the way that... Uh, you can emote the sound. Mortal people would. So instead you kind of hear this like... <laughs> low noise come from like underneath his chin. Uh... And he is going to shoot the stun gun directly into his heart. All right. So you... this is Hardcore, the D rules for you. Inherently, pointing a ranged weapon point blank is technically a disadvantage. You have advantage. That's true. So you technically still have to make a roll. So it's just <laughs> a standard. You have him by the neck. Yep. <laughs> and you're pointing it right to his chest, the widest part on the body. <clears throat> Pointed this straight the at the heart. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's <laughs> go. <laughs> this next. part has always been the weird yeah. part to me. It, it is that like, <clears throat> at some point this should go away. <laughs> at some point it just no needs whammies, to be no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. Yeah. But you know, you apparently again. there's a way to mess Somewhere it up. Else. Apparently there's always a way to mess it up. It's gonna be another soft twenty for me. All right. Ooh. You will effectively hit him. All right. Much better than Marshall, apparently. Yes. And he and he explodes. Confetti. I don't want that. QR's not evil. Yet. That, that's not what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give him a minute. Uh, oh yeah, it's two. New apples I'll take those through. <laughs> uh, fifteen total. All right. Ooh. That is an ooh. Hmm. He's outright killed. He's killed him. Eh, except the losses. Open. A lot I of you may die, but that's, sec that's a sacrifice I am willing to take. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the total damage? That was, uh, 15, did I say? Eight plus five, yeah. Eight plus five plus two, fifteen. Yeah, usually uh, you denote these to be uh, non-lethal, but somehow should be. through your point blankness and just pure destruction of his will, seem to have just totally electrocuted him. Yeah, <laughs> holy damn. Well. Unfortunately, his max health was 10. He had 5 HP. Nailed it. This isn't generally a problem for most creatures, but uh, in this scenario, it was. QR straight up killed the bitch. <laughs> and it won't be his last. The robot uprising has begun. As yeah, you see, it seemed to see him fry. Was this a sack man? This was the sack man. Yes. <laughs> I, the sack I, man is no I, more. I, the sack I, man has been sacked. <laughs> yeah. You 
but uh, it's, uh, to... you're out of initiative and uh you not evil guys don't worry uh-huh. <laughs> uh so barth kind of re- uh reacts like oh well uh, i can't i guess i can't say we didn't see this coming uh we might as well just get inside hopefully there's no more friends of them inside I think it's very important that we take these bodies and move them to a safer location where they cannot be discovered and identified. Six feet on the ground. Agree. You are not evil, guys. As Remember this. Kind of will pick up the one body uh, kind of near the edge. As uh, Variable also walk up to the in front of you, grab that one, and just kind of slump them over and walk walk inside the the building. You're doing a good job. I'm very proud of you. Uh, should we just, uh, as you kind of get close to the entrance, should we just uh, leave this one here? So he kind of points to the security guard that you uh, knocked out from earlier. Say it with me, kids. I loot the bodies. <laughs> I think that is an there acceptable is... option. If you wanted to. We yeah, should be careful was... not to take anything from them, though. Otherwise, it will appear suspicious. Well, as I say, there were the things on the ground outside. Sackman had the name for a reason. Sackman. Could I perceive what was in the sack? sack? Uh, you can perceive what was in the sack. Yes, as you if you walk mm-hmm. around, make an uh, investigation check since they kind of went into the snow, or some of them did. <laughs> yes. Some parts uh, stayed on top. Some kind of sunk down. It's you just re- reached okay. down and touched that man's sack. I will now roll to investigate the sack. <laughs> All right. So. Well, there's the sack is empty at this point. <laughs> Oh, that's unfortunate. It's the ground. He has emptied his sack all over the ground. Well, he cut it open. Oh. That was the whole reason we called him Sack Man. Because he cut <laughs> open his sack. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's unfortunate. That was his Not only is Sack Man dead, his sack is no more. If I've rolled the 12, how familiar am I with the contents of his sack? <laughs> uh, so you're able to find um, <laughs> some of the things... You can see the holes that they had fallen into to get into the snow, but when you reach down there, nothing seems to come out. Just the snow seems to just go too deep. Um, but some of the Calm stuff down. that has landed on the surface of the snow, um, uh, you kind of are able to see. Um, you, somewhat strangely enough, don't seem to see any credit chips. You'll see kind of almost certain raw meats. Um, and some uh, some of the spots oh. you will see um, uh, kind of different uh, pebbles and metals, like scraps that were kind of around. Um, but yeah, nothing uh, that seems to. Oh, and you find a you find a, a card, like a like a kind of a pure just kind of card is there any writing on the card can i like pick it up and try to read it yeah so when you pick it up you can kind of hit the button to enable its um its view feature um mm-hmm. and it kind of shows it shows the picture of um kind of a a darker skinned uh human male um you kind of you'll kind of read it as uh <laughs> What was that? I just every five seconds keep looking at Franny. Oh. <laughs> Left. Uh, you'll read it as uh, uh, Ezek Wrath uh, Sector D. And then it has a barcode. I'm going to assume I don't understand what that means. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're not you're not part of this facility. I mean, you assume it's a facility yeah. ID, but that's all you really know. Does QR have a built-in QR code scanner or a barcode scanner? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no. <laughs> so that's okay. why they call them that. I'm going to put that on me for forgetting to I include that when I made the character. No, I can definitely look into that, though, as a craft for Vect, for sure. Okay, sure. I, I think I'll definitely look into that idea. I think that sounds great. Uh, but you do not have it by default. Okay. You'll have to upgrade to Mark III. 
Uh, but no, yeah, so you're able to see that. Um, otherwise, yeah, some of the things just seem to have fallen deeper into the snow. QR is going to pocket the card. He's going to take some of the metal scraps. Um, he is going to leave the meat behind. Sure. <laughs> they always do. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta retcon that super quick. All right. This this meat, stay with me. <laughs> this meat, um, how fresh is it? Is there still like juice or blood or any liquid coming off of it? Um, no, not really. Um, it definitely just okay. seems to be uncooked. It seems to have kind of gotten its time to kind of freeze within the frig uh, the somewhat semi-frigid uh not really freeze i should say but like refrigerate sure um yeah okay in that case uh qr would have no use for it so he'll leave it all right yep all right so you make your in way in case. Oy. so crew have launched in their shell in their shuttle off towards the distant mountains in order to fulfill their new quest the big centipede on the wall hell yeah uh yeah quick kill it with kindness <laughs> or it's burn really it quick. in holy Marshall fire <laughs> Marshal french the uh, french the centipede french it yeah. just go all in I uh, caress the centipede. <laughs> no regrets. As you guys are, are inevitably making your way towards the um, the mountain range, you, uh, especially um, Claire, you, since you're piloting it, you start to notice that the uh, the climate seems to be becoming much a lot more inclement as uh, it seems to be getting much harder to uh, try to be able to pilot through the the thickness of the the snow. Mm -hmm. uh, inevitably, it's the the control becomes a little more difficult. Um, oh boy! You, you try to kind of maintain the controls here. Uh, make me a um, skills best laid for these because. use a I guess a sleight of hand how will you keep the controls in control one day the rest of the party will roll but it is not this day <laughs> <laughs> you're the one who's flying <laughs> I'm willing to admit we probably don't even exist uh, I, I'm getting free of the party I don't know how to drive oh yeah I forgot Bennett what's up in your uh in your past ventures, kind of free tower, what were, what were some of the things you did again? Just kind of general. Give us your backstory. Well, I mean, Tell us. It's just more of like, you know, like, did you do a lot of traveling? Were you, or was it like generally like as a part of a larger group? Um, Edom did do a lot of traveling. Um, as when he was younger, he would travel like longer distances but like once he got to work to the tower work as a chef started just more sticking to his own city so you but you kind of so you kind of led a relatively like more normal life before this yeah nothing like okay. and then too crazy. similarly uh jade with Ava, yes. um on in kind of your upbringing did you also kind of just do a lot of like like kind of before CrossFit. before the the tower came to you and everything were you just kind of generally living a like a more standard life or were you just kind of like a baseline kind of priesthood where it was just like kind of floating around the tower and that was pretty much about it not much in terms of long distance travel yeah it'd be more priestess duties uh along uh doing sermons services alternating between being the priest himself or uh Right. Boy kind of thing. All right. So the way I inevitably will have you to um, kind of mark yourselves a bit is um, you guys both have 
Um, if you can figure, I don't know how easy it is to add this in beyond D and D Beyond, but um, you guys are able to add um, proficiency with land vehicles. Um, okay. Or you can at least make a note of it. Um, yeah. So the idea more being that it's like being able to drive a car. Yeah, mint jalopy. Um, obviously, vehicles are different in this realm, but still. Uh, add new proficiency with a tool. Um, because yeah, still... me and you, Franny, talked about that. Yes. Um, you mostly just have familiarity with more with some space vehicles, but not really much with like land and shuttle vehicles. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, and you've never yeah, makes sense. specifically piloted like a spacecraft. All right. You just have like some familiarity. So <laughs> if you find yourself on a spacecraft, you may have uh, be able to point in the right direction <laughs> and for the pilot which... to go fly it. <laughs> <laughs> the cockpit's probably uh, this way. <laughs> Marshall, would you yes. say that once I saw that uh, the road, sorry, the road, quote unquote, uh, Sorry, becoming a bit more difficult. Would I have time to say do one bonus action? Uh, potentially, yeah. Okay. If that's the case, um, I'm gonna see that. I'm gonna see that uh, Claire starts pressing buttons a lot quicker, and I'm gonna make her go faster. And we're gonna use one evolutionary dice on her. Why? Uh, yes. What? So, uh, he said a lot of words. Yeah, so explain what he needs to do now. Well, nothing because I roll. Um, okay, Claire, you get plus two to your dexterity score. You touch me, you die. I do it from far away. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you can. So, uh, so you can. So plus when two. you. Okay. So with so your. So you can like use that uh, that sleight of hand check uh, with your new dexterity score then, and you can give me that total. So really, uh, I, just, I just gave you a plus one to it. Well, now it would be a soft twenty then. Okay. Wow. So seemingly so far, you're able to keep a good handle on it. Um, you're starting to feel a little bit of dip. The rest of you are also like really starting to feel the whole kind of shuttle um, kind of hop as she is keeping control of it for now but clearly there's a bit of a there's some rough givings ahead here as you'll kind of almost emerge <laughs> uh, you, you kind of within the snow you'll start to hear the booming thunder thunder snow <laughs> bum bum Thunder, your engine's broken. <laughs> <laughs> As yes, a, a lightning bolt seems to. Oh my strike. god, it's like Bon Scott's in the room with engines. Um, make they another sleight of hand check. Uh, I'm just yelling, does Claire. The, they're supposed to do that, does right? The, the score <laughs> increase uh, also persist, or is it just that roll? Uh, it's for a minute. Okay. So yeah, make another roll. It's just like a man. It only slide. lasts a minute. God. <laughs> make oh, another no. slide of head check. <laughs> that one's not as good. <laughs> that is going to be... Let's see what's a plus one. That is going to be a 13, sir. All right. It is a... As you feel yourself descending rapidly, it is a rough landing. Uh, you you succeed in landing and not exploding. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Good job. That was one, BK. We would have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> would have had a big problem That's if there was a one. That, that was our Because you're all especially uh, level Good two. news, I'm back to playing one character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, especially because you're all level two. It's not like you have a lot of resistances and a lot of health. That's true. I mean, if that happened, I guess... Um... Uh, Bennett could take a variable. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he could take Barth, and I'll just take the unconscious guard. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know I got off on a wrong foot. <laughs> Marco's like, put me in, coach. All right, no. So you guys are able to land. You don't explode. Um, you start to, you know, it's it's a rough landing, but the snow kind of seems to 
um, glide your path along the top for a while as you then you start to kind of bury in is um, the front of the as a, the front of the the pain kind of starts to seem to totally um, be encased in uh, the dark what is now the dark snow as little light is shedding from the outside I start hyperventilating okay. oh god I like a, I like a Uh The window from the from those in the back who are closer to the actual windows, you can see the outside still. And actually, there seems to be uh, there seems to be sunlight uh, coming in from the oh, window. Oh no! How large is the window? <laughs> Not terribly big, about the size of uh, it's kind of a plain window. Damn. That would be I like don't... seven by seven inches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I want to punch the window open. I mean, you could try. Uh, you could certainly oh try. Yeah, I definitely want to punch the window open. All right. Make an unarmed strike. All righty. Is this cabin depressurized? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, technically not anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> no so. Uh, your crash uh, landing doesn't really make that a moot point. That would be 18 total. Uh, let's see. So, what's the damage you do with your unarmed strike? Unarmed is That's just, really why uh, more what matters rather the, than that. It's just two. Two. Uh, they the they, they make these pretty sturdy. So it, you you punch it, you give it a good whack, you kind of feel it vibrate, but it doesn't seem to break through. Avalanche. Damn it, Alan, what are you doing? <laughs> I am not ready to yet to meet my death. I need to take a sun filled breath. Punch! <laughs> Do you <mean> another one? <laughs> yeah. Alright, we're all good. Claire's gonna look at uh, Gray real quick and be like, Um, is Sam the Eagle gonna be alright over there, or are we gonna have ourselves a problem? Uh, what was the damage? Or what was the roll? Sorry. I feel like we should just let him this course, you know? Better uh, now than later. You feel like you hear a little bit. You Actually, now you start to crack the window. Okay, but this is the It's a small one. It's car, not a so... big crack. Hold it's on. a small one. Avant. But from the edge, you start to see it kind of fray at the edge. I'm, I'm going to like try to put my hands on his, ha on his hand to <laughs> stop it from punching. No, not now, Gray. The window is just about to give way. Avant. <laughs> Turn back. Claire, can you open a door? <laughs> please don't. Is the, it. Please don't I'm it. sorry. Is the craft sufficiently landed at this point, or are we still cruising along no, the snow? When you when I mentioned it, kind of got dark. That was kind of the end of the snow, like, or that was kind of the end of your movement. Okay. Yeah, the sunlight coming in was kind of also near the end of the movement. Uh, Claire is going to unbuckle the many straps and harnesses that I would assume this craft has because it is a safe aircraft no, it's one uh, that follows regulation around the neck. Uh, she is going to step around to the back of the craft where Avant is. And she's going to grab him by the beak. Okay. I'll be back in a sec. Use the bathroom. All right. Um, as I say, I guess if you if you kind of if you resist it too much, I guess I'll ever make a grapple check. It's more surprise than anything else. Okay. So you get. Do you get the? Burp. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to listen to me real closely, bird boy. If you need the door to be open, you will politely ask me to open the door for you. And then, and only then, we will, will use I the open heavy the door flamer on this aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I have too many Warhammer like memes going through me right now. We're on a roll tonight with those. Because of fucking, oh, it's because of Russian Badger. He did it to me. 
but I want to make sure that this is perfectly clear. If you step a single talon out of line while you are on a mission with me, I will rip out every single one of your fucking feathers. I will pluck them out like you are a freshly baked turkey. And then I am going to shove them all into your mouth and make you choke on them. Do you understand? And then before he has a chance to respond, she's going to let go of his beak, lightly like slap him on the head and laugh and just be like, <laughs> I'm fucking with you. It's fine. And on out. We got to go. We got a mission to do. Let's go. She's going to like pat him on the back and go to open the door. <laughs> Good. The door opens and you see a, from the door, um, you immediately are able to see like a very solid amount of sunlight edged from the doorway. Uh, Gray was standing right next to Amant <laughs> as all this was happening because <laughs> he was trying to keep his hand down. Yes. He, I'm assuming that we're both looking absentmindedly at, at Prob- Claire as she walks out. I wouldn't Probably. say absentmindedly, more like in fear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, there it is. There's that, yeah, abject don't terror in my eyes. Uh, I just lean in. I have a raging is boner it, right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's not hot. Is it like? Is it? Is it? Bad? I was kind of into that. <laughs> she shouts from the doorway. Yes, it is. Keep it in your pants. She walks out the door. Uh, <laughs> the gray is not so gray right now. <laughs> That's red. <laughs> All right. Well, the door is open. She has stepped outside. Anybody else would like to follow? Yes. I guess. I'm going to hold Gray in front of me and then walk towards her. (laughs) As you guys step outside, uh, make a perception check, everybody. Just uh, see what everybody (laughs) gauges in the area. Oh my god, I finally have to roll. (laughs) (laughs) Quick, everybody roll that once. Oh shit, I forgot how hard my perception was. I got a 20. Sorry. Yeah, right. Not natural. Okay. <coughs> nice. I have a 21 total. All right. I got a 24. All right. 16. All right. Everybody, so everybody notices this, which is that um, uh, what seems to be strange is the whole snow that you all saw through the windows and the, you know, the cockpit window that was like giving you all this turbulence on the way in. And this like blizzard, and you, it doesn't feel like you really traveled that far once you started land, crashing. It is nowhere. There, it's not to be seen. You can see for, and the the flatness of this side of the mountain is almost expansive. Like you can see almost it feels like miles, and yet there is no darkness. There is no heavy snow. Uh, however, those of you who rolled uh, 20 and above uh, do see a small box-like figure in the distance. You say box or box? Box. Box-like figure. The oh. fox box? <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be a good ways away, but it does seem to be uh, relatively uh, building-shaped. We're supposed uh, to secure it. We're, uh, we're supposed to secure a facility, right, Enum? Uh, that is the task. All right. I, I could be a facility. Yeah. Uh, does look like it. Although, no snow. It's a little bit disappointing. I really wanted to see what this world's snow looked like. Oh, there's snow still. You're on snow. Oh. There's oh. no like like the storm like the big blizzard and like yeah. the, the cloud like the dark clouds and the thunder none of that's here. It's Ooh. just a snowy plain. Got it. Uh, gray seems to be in his element. Mm-hmm. Claire's gonna make a quick snow angel. <laughs> what What are you doing? That's how we find her once we leave the show. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you don't know how long it's been since I've gotten to make one of these. Uh, she's gonna stand back up. How's it look? 
Bigger performance check. Look like it. <laughs> However, <laughs> really do with more sun. If you want to look, make a performance check. Okay. And then we'll give you our critiques. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a nine. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Die. I've seen better. It's, She's beaming with pride. It, it, Solid it's five out of best, ten. It's your best work so far. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha on the technicality. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. We well. You're go next to forward. a crash landed shuttle. Mm hmm. Um, how cold is it right now? Uh, you, you, you would gauge it as kind of roughly, especially being, uh, kind of used to more of the colder climates. This is for you, and at least compared to your home life, at least was, you know, not bad. Uh, you kind of roughly gauge it's kind of in the uh, kind of lower 20s. Okay, so it sucks for everybody else. Hey. Uh, I don't know Claire's. I guess I don't know how Claire fares in colder climates. <laughs> Avant, probably. Yep. Oh, yeah. I'm shirtless bird boy. Speaking of which, you'll kind of immediately start getting a ping. On your on your earphones. Turning, turning. Always goes without fail every time we have new mail. Thank God we don't have the annoying QR here to say something stupid about getting a message. Greeting. Just <laughs> 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 <Yeah. laughs> Almost just start yelling. <laughs> um, uh, I answered I the message. Angel all along. Uh, he he hello, as you hear the voice of uh, Lin Dr. Lindsey Cross. Uh, I got the reading that your shuttle crashed. What's ha what happened? We Are you crashed. Okay? Is anybody hurt? Doctor, I, re I regret to inform you we're all dead. Um, there were no survivors. <laughs> <laughs> really don't appreciate this at this time. No, oh, everything's all right, Dr. Cross. Don't be so stiff. How... There's the easiest underhand slam dunk for Don't Be So Cross. Hey well, the next time you can make the joke. And she, like, slaps him. Oh, you get him into a rage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, all, right. all the infighting. Well, what's, what's the status of your shuttle? Very crashed in the snow. Fortunately, largely in one piece, but uh, not entirely <laughs> sure about getting it relaunched. Might take some time. Well, I, there should be there should be a navigator. You should be able to pull out the navigator pad from the console of the cockpit, and please grab any type of thermal gear from the storage. Or you go too far. I'm reading Avant's thermals and they're giving me a heart attack right now. Really? They're that crazy? I immediately start feeling uh, Avant's up trying to get, trying to engage myself. He's a cold boy. Like, oh my god, Avant. I need to look at me and blink He's not wearing times. a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I don't believe I was ever quite told just how much this world would be cold. Avant, your beak is changing color, and that's troubling and fascinating at the same time. How does just it do go that? get the bone. thermal gear. Claire whispers to Enum, Oh, these two just have no personal boundaries at all, do they? It's kind of refreshing to see, honestly. That's one adjective that someone could use for it. <laughs> Now, what can I do to get Grey into my personal space, if you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodbye. I'm going to go get a little gear. Oh, boy, look at the time. We gotta go get that gear, honey. 
Let's uh, just go ahead and yes. uh, let's, go, let's go do that. I'm yeah. pushing Avant in. Go, go, go. I'll be fine oh, out here. No. I'll keep watch. And I keep watch outside. Let's make sure there's a snuggie for everyone. All right. What are you all yeah. grabbing from the ship? Do I even need anything? I'm a robo. Well, she <laughs> has to grab both. She's she a robo. Robo, boy. Both. <laughs> She's she a to robo. Grab boy. both the thermal gear and the uh, navigation console from the. I would like to grab those then. All right, you're able to. Uh, you can grab. It kind of detaches from the uh, cockpit as a uh, as kind of a decently sized tablet, like about an eight inch tablet. As you're kind of able to pull it up, and uh, you are able to see yourself on the map. Um, uh, however, you get kind of a little reading of the. Uh, it it kind of work. It kind of almost is like working on sonar, or, uh, like kind of like a would would look like a sonar right now. Um, as it kind of pulses out as it scans the kind of area. So I don't I don't know what it is that that caused that interference. I we read some type of strange weather based activity, much like what it existed beforehand, uh, that made the area so inhospitable. But for some reason, it was only temporary. Hmm. Unfortunately, due to that fact, I don't think I can send another shuttle to come get you. Just use the navigation patch to hopefully get you guys towards the right way in the facility. As far as I'm reading, you're nearby an outpost. Should be able to go there. And from there, maybe you can get a better detailed map of the location. It's, uh, the, it's getting a little bit of interference. Uh, the, you're only getting a somewhat a more immediate location on your navigation tab. But uh, all the best. And... Uh, find any creatures that seem harmful just do what you can to survive <clears throat> once you if once you get to the facility hopefully maybe we can find a solution to what is causing this strange weather phenomenon maybe that's something to do with what happened there seems like a logical conclusion correct all right well I'll check you can check in with me if you need any assistance otherwise I will leave you all to it cross out <clears throat> Sorry, that sounded kind of cool. Okay. I'll cover that one. All right. Um, so yes. Ray has used mold earth outside to make a hole and has taken soil samples. What's the what's the range on mold earth? Curious. Uh, the range? Yeah. Thirty feet. In a five by five square. Funny. Where do you cast it? Like right underneath uh, you? Not right underneath me, because I know Minecraft rules. Uh, <laughs> a God. little bit in front of me. <laughs> All right. As you uh, you kind of point down at this five foot square. It's one of those things where you usually think of like you're trying to, because it's snow, so you have to kind of, you know, you kind of have to like try to sense for the ground as you try to like push the spell in and it takes you a while to kind of get through to actually find earth and as it kind of sinks in the five feet um you like you sense that it went but at the moment you don't see any shift in the ground in front of you so like you feel like you've engaged some type of like that it like it worked but See no shift. Huh. That's interesting. I start digging with my hands. In front of you. Yeah. All right. So as you start to kind of push the snow away, you start to suddenly disturb enough of it. And suddenly, kind of from underneath your hands, it starts to kind of... Uh, you kind of start to... It starts to kind of... Uh, push under a little bit in front of you. Uh, make a quick, like, little... Just make a quick dex check. All right. Let's see if this is what kills me. Oh, that was close. 
Uh, that is a four. All right. Nice. Uh, you, oh, no. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> it kind of catches you off guard as you kind of fall face first into the snow, and you kind of find yourself about, about kind of, I guess you could say, like, almost – since you're leaning forward, what's about kind of stomach deep into it as you're as you've kind of almost accidentally swan dived your way into this somewhat <laughs> malleated snow, <laughs> but you find you're only about st- stomach deep. Claire's gonna walk over and try to help them out. <laughs> uh, well, so everybody kind of went into the ship, so make a perception check, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gray ah. struggles for a little bit. And he he, he recites his face. Got yeah, another <laughs> soft twenty. Okay, I got a twenty-six. There you go. All right, sixteen. All right, uh, you all kind of hear this like somewhat deep, just like, <laughs> as then you'll hear like a, <laughs> as like the some of the snow kind of seems to fall in, and you'll start to you'll kind of hear a quick like, hum. <laughs> <laughs> I turn to Enum. Well, guess he's dead. Let's go check it out. <laughs> Might as well. As you, as you kind of quickly come outside after grabbing some of the thermal gear, um, and uh, but who's all grabbing thermal gear? Was it both Claire and Avant? I, I'm grabbing it so for you, sure. You kind of I'm also going to see the, if there's the any better gear. coffee. Well, so the thermal gear was kind of a kit, like it has like this jacket, but then it also has these like boot attachments on the bottom. At their at their feet. Do the boots match the jacket? Well, they're metal, so they more match your your frame than anything. Uh, the jacket is relatively. I can uh, make it work. Is kind of what looks more like this kind of cloth based thing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't seen it, but I was gonna say it's essentially what Barthel is wearing, but or mm. he's not here. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Who? Exactly. Uh, so yeah. Who's- Bark. It's kind of these thick. Uh, it's kind of this like, uh, seemingly what it kind of almost feels like a like a kind of almost like a windbreaky kind of cloth material, um, but then the boots are are metal. <laughs> They're kind of like what the football players wear at, at games, like the court where the QBs get those big jackets, kind of like that. Ah, uh, yes, I totally know all about the sports jackets, as I am a big fan. And go to all the sports games. Look, they, yeah. they've they've made memes with with Tom Brady in this jacket because he gets yeah. like an absurdly like thick one. I'm glad that's the connecting point. Oh yeah, I recognize yeah. it from this meme, not from being <laughs> around people. I just I thought well, I'm just saying it would help with it would help with some people's connectivity to it. People may see mm-hmm. the meme and be like, oh yeah, sure. I remember now. I remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the thing I saw on my computer and uh, outside. When do I start suffocating? <laughs> it, it's only this is an important a, question. It's only been a couple seconds so far. Give it a moment. Uh, Honestly, out of anyone, you should know. They, they noticed rather quickly as you all. So you were able to grab that thermal gear, and then you heard the the crash in, and then so as you come out, uh, kind of carrying. Uh, Gray's gear as well as, um, as well as kind of wearing your own. You see him kind of almost waist deep in the in the front of the snow as his legs are kind of kicking up. Uh, they they do see them kick a little bit and then they just drop. <laughs> Ian just says, "Do we help him?" I don't know if I want to. No, as much as I appreciate it, Gray. Here, I, sent it, I sent I sent you a reference pray. picture, and it also has a meme attached to it. Oh my god! So there you go. You have a better <laughs> idea of kind of what I'm referring to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute for units the, for the here. So the Marshall, you can't you can't put Kingpin in this campaign. <laughs> it's a licensed character. <laughs> Watch this, you're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let me let me increase that. Here you go. All right, there for the chat. That's what it looks like. <laughs> well, that's that's what I. That's the image I put. In. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, you guys are. So yes. Are you? Do you pull them out? 
I suppose. Oh, you know, I'll take the right leg if you take the left. The anger model out, three. Pull out King Kupo. Right. Your guys' <laughs> strike scores, it, it takes very little as, uh, as you know, Gray, you resigned to your fate. You feel <laughs> that this may be, in fact, the end. As suddenly, after only a short 30 seconds, uh, you uh, suddenly feel two vi almost vice grips on your leg as you just are ripped out of the snow <laughs> <laughs> and onto the slightly dug in a little bit, but like on your knees. Whoa. In, uh, a little, in, just into the kind of the normal snow you were in earlier. Uh, did you put on the thermal gear? Um, oh, for some reason that didn't go off. Interesting. Um, Claire, are you in the... Yeah, I wasn't in a hurry. All right. So you, uh, so when you put on the shoes as you walked onto the uh, the snow, um, you actually are kind of now floating on top of it, you know, like Legolas, <laughs> the thing that angers right me. <laughs> I'm sorry, bullshit, man. <laughs> Tell that they to don't the Eldar. die; they float. Fuck them. <laughs> Tell that to the Eldar. I agree. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, uh, Avon, um, did you put the any of the thermal gear on as well, or? I put on the coat. I didn't really care for the shoes. All right. So you you walk out to sink in, and you kind of notice that with the faint glow of Claire's <laughs> boots, that they uh, allow her to kind of walk on the snow. Ah, oh, man. Ooh, that was a refreshing little wake up call. Hey, thanks. Grace and dear. I I think you may have misunderstood. That's not how you make a snow angel. You're supposed to lie on your back, and then you kind of like wave your arms a little bit. It's a totally different process from whatever it is you were doing there. I, I, I've done a couple of snow road games myself, but I discovered something very interesting right now. This ground right here is all snow. Very good. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's several inches of it. We're on hardened snow right now. Dur like, there's dirt several feet below. Like and that's why there was... Feet. It felt like it took a long time to find dirt. So, no, on is... my planet, we don't really have snow. I'm not entirely sure what this is, don't you know? I mean, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I guess we call it... Pro yeah, we yeah, we I'm, uh. I'm stretching, man. Give me a minute. He's he's trying his best. He's trying no, his I best. Love it. Yeah, I, I'm on a on my home world. This is we just call this permafrost. It's pretty much everywhere in my where I live at. Uh, being so far away from the sun, but uh, <gasps> yeah, I know it was it was fascinating. Claire instinctively does like she like half moves to like grab his beak again. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but yeah, not again. Uh, you guys are not floating. Flashbacks. You guys seem to be floating, and I am irrationally angry for some reason. No, only Claire is, because Claire so far is the only one to claim to put on the boots. <laughs> because oh. I am above all of these heathens. <laughs> Brother! <laughs> Brother, we float here! <laughs> Oh, like, is that what the thermal gear does? It uh, can be. Weren't really yes. real, so I'm not entirely sure what's making her float. Pretty sure it's the shoes. I think we can solve that mystery. All right. Um, I guess I'll just put on the shoes then. Just the are these shoes. like? Are these like pumps or lifts? Like, are they gonna make him look a little taller? Maybe fix his posture a bit when he puts them on? No, I'm gonna be honest. In terms of their, even though they're metal, they're like metal frames that go on kind of the outside of shoes, like that you would, mm -hmm. or boots that you would normally wear. Uh, they are effectively metallic dad sandals. Yes. 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 Metal Crocs. Oh man, I already break <laughs> my monster. Well, they're not. They're the dad sandals in the fact that they have like the two straps that go to over and then like a base plate. Yep. 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 So not that full Croc of like slipper. 
Oh, we haven't gone oh. full croc yet. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, uh, who has my gear? I mean, what your thermal stuff? Yeah. I mean, I'm assuming it pretty much just got laid on the ground. What's they got? Not what's they all had to pick you up from the ground. Oh, Am oh. toss him his thermal gear. Now, Claire, do you know of these closest attributes? She just stands there. Putting on these boots. <laughs> he done toss him the gear. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I no. <laughs> I put on the boots, but uh, I do not put on the jacket. Okay. I don't need it. So instead, uh, I hold it up. Avant saying, Who is walking her. Avant and Enum have decided to go bootless, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Gray has decided to go coatless. I'm actually gonna take the coat from him and put it on myself. That second layer. <laughs> awesome. <Yeah. laughs> All right. But no boots. You you don't decide to go back for anything. Anybody have any second thoughts after seeing what the the any of the gear does? Is there any better coffee in the landing craft than what I got back at the base? Because this stuff, I mean, it's okay, but I've had better stuff in my life. There, there is like... none. Truly a tragedy. Shite. You know. Oh man. Truly. Uh... I'll right, right, stick with this for now. Of the highest counter. <laughs> so, so nobody makes any trips back? Or are, you, are you heading out? Claire is ready to move forward. I'm, I'm heading out too. Getting the last bit of snow on my hair. Tying my hair up in a ponytail. Getting ready for to fuck some shit up. All right. So you all head out towards the, the building, the figure of what seemed like a building... Some of you, only one of you with, or two of you with snowshoes, two without. Shall we hope they don't regret that decision? Oh, God. In the next episode of Dark Matter. <laughs> <laughs> this episode has to be called The Sack Man. <laughs> I have been next been time, man. I have next time on Dark Matter, Matter Footwear Defeated. <laughs> <laughs> You know, who knows? Maybe you chose to ignore a glaring, uh, a glaring uh, foreshadowing. Just kill them now. <laughs> Wait, we we have the navigation system, right? Yep. Okay. Do you not right, wearing I'm... boots? We'll be fine. So next time. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Have you ever been to a desert? You don't just wear boots, man. A what? Uh, well, I mean, the, the deserts I've been in, I've well, been wearing are, boots. Yeah, you know, they're snowshoes, not really boots, but they're snowshoes. Well, you don't count. Yeah. But anyway, thank you yes. for joining us on this episode. We will see you next week. We hope you'll join us. Goodbye. Goodbye.